Hi, I'm Bob Cohen, manager of Iwokwa Water Technology Service Training. In this video segment, we discuss basic reverse osmosis operations for commercial and industrial customers. If you do not know the basics of RO systems, please refer to our video titled Introduction to RO. Before starting any job, pause to consider safety. I recommend the following minimum personal protective equipment. Safety glasses, steel-toed boots, and water-resistant gloves if you are handling the reverse osmosis membranes. Before performing any task, do a Safe Performance Self-Assessment, or SPSA. In an SPSA, you identify and minimize risks by asking yourself, how badly could performing this task hurt me? Now that we've addressed safety, let's talk about basic RO operations. We'll start by reviewing a classic graphic representation of an RO unit. We use the classic graphic representation because RO units come in different shapes and sizes, from the small MFX to the large M86. Let's go over how the RO works. In many cases, a level switch on a storage tank starts and stops the RO. Using a level switch on a storage tank to start and stop the RO is described as the tank calling for water. In most RO units, the RO can be started and stopped either in response to a call for water or regardless of whether the tank is calling for water. Let's continue our description of how the RO works. Feed water, the water source, flows into the RO. Cartridges in a cartridge filter housing remove suspended particles found in most feed waters. A pump pressurizes the water that then flows into the RO membrane housings. Product water, which is the pure water, flows to the customer's application. Reject water, which contains dissolved solids rejected from the product water, flows to drain. For RO units with flows less than 50 gallons a minute, a reject recycle stream flows back into the feed water. This reject recycle stream provides hydraulic balance that minimizes RO membrane fouling. How much water does the RO produce? Well, as a rule of thumb, the following product flows are recommended. For four inch diameter membranes, one to 1.25 gallons per minute per membrane. And for eight inch diameter membranes, product flow recommended is four to five gallons per minute per membrane. The specification sheet or operation manual specifies RO product, RO reject, and RO reject recycle flows. These flows can be modified based on plant requirements and feed water quality. Often, the Evoqua sales professional or technician will make such recommendations. Here's why it's important to control flows. RO membrane fouling is accelerated if the product flow is too high, but you might run out of water if the product flow is too low. RO membrane fouling is accelerated if the reject flow is too low, but you waste water and increase operating costs if reject flow is too high. Controlling flows is easy. For large RO units, a variable frequency drive automatically maintains the pump motor speed to maintain product flow. Product flow is set in an HMI, or human machine interface, in the control panel. The operator adjusts reject flow with a hand valve on the reject line. For smaller RO units, product flow is set with a hand valve on the feed water line. And reject flow is set with a hand valve on the reject line. Thanks for watching our video about RO operations. Please visit our website, www.evoqua.com for more information on reverse osmosis.